Praise the Lord, everybody. Would that you would rest on your feet. We're going into the word of the Lord. We're going to be reading from two passages of scripture. Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 11. I am not a, what you call a topical preacher or a themed preacher. I have to preach what the Lord gives me. But recognizing that we are upon this, what folks would call Easter break, some would call vacation, spring break. We commemorate the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Jesus Christ. So I want to read Matthew, the 21st chapter, when to ask, standing in the reverence and the reading of his word. First of all, I'd like to give honor to our pastor. Come on, let's give God praise for our pastor. And to let Lady Dorney, we celebrate her this morning as well. To my wife, I honor her this morning. To everyone in their respective places, mindful of the time. But I would like to do what thus saith the Lord. And it says, and when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All of this was done that it might be fulfilled. Somebody say fulfilled. Which was spoken by the prophet saying, tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass and a colt and the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them and brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes and they were set and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh into the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Let's drive over to St. John, the 15th chapter. We're going to start at verse 11. And it says, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy, somebody shout out joy, might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love that hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Verse 16, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Thank you, Lord. And ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye ask of the father, in my name, he may give it 
you the heavenly father god we thank you for last night's lying down god and this morning's awakening god we ask right now god that you would speak through me as a pen of a ready writer god decree and declare god what you have given unto me to your people god let them not see me god but see you god be glorified god let satan be terrified this morning god get the glory god out of our lives save deliver set free this morning god god satan you're a liar and the devil god has no power in this place god we're going to give you glory we're going to give you praise because it's all due in your name somebody shout out amen as you take your seats just turn to your neighbor say neighbor i found joy on my journey i found joy on my journey I found joy on my journey. To use for a recurring subject, my soul shouts Hosanna. My soul shouts Hosanna. Somebody shout out Hosanna. It might take me a few moments just to lay the groundwork. We understand that it's Palm Sunday, but I want just to for those of us biblical scholars that may have not attended Sunday school in a number of years and may have memories that may have gotten a little foggy, we may have someone that's visiting us who does not necessarily understand the symbolic nature or the research or the rich heritage. So I want just for a few moments just to set the groundwork. Palm Sunday is a day that we celebrate the triumph entry of Jesus into Jerusalem as it's recorded in Matthew the 21st chapter. It was one week before his resurrection. The Gospels of Mark and Luke also recorded the same story from their perspective. As Jesus entered into the holy city, he neared the culmination of a long journey toward Golgotha. He had come to save the lost. Notice I said he had come to save the lost. Very, very, very interesting because he had come to save the lost and that is part of our theme as the carpenter's house. According to Luke 19 and 10, for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And now was the time, it was the place for him to secure that salvation. Palm Sunday is typically marked as what we would call the passion week because the passion with Christ willingly went to the cross in order to pay for our sins. He went to pay for the sins of the people. He went to pay for our sins. He paid a debt that we could not owe. It was also the final days of Jesus' earthly ministry. So I'd like to look at it. Palm Sunday was really the beginning of the end of Jesus' work here on earth. But we in the apostolic faith refer to it as what we call Holy Week. Now, pastors already said that every day is holy. We understand that we take time out to celebrate, you know, and things like that. But every day is holy. Every day that God wakes you up, you ought to give him praise. Every day that God, you know, grants you new mercies and new blessings, you ought to give him praise. You don't have to wait for one day out of the year in order to give God back what he has been giving to you. But Palm Sunday began with Jesus and his disciples traveling over the Mount of Olives. The Lord has sent two disciples ahead into the village of Bethpage to find an animal to ride and as the scripture declares they found an ass and tied it with a colt but just as Jesus has said that they would but when they had untied it the owners began to question them and the disciples had responded and with the answer that Jesus had provided in other words the disciples were obedient they did not add they did not take away they gave the person exactly what Jesus told them to do and the Lord hath need of them is what they said and amazingly the owners were satisfied with the answer they let the disciples go just as the bible had declared i'm going somewhere the disciples brought them to jesus and he threw their cloaks on the coat and jesus put it on it and jesus had approached jerusalem a large multitude had gathered around him so i can imagine as he's entering into the city here's these people becoming in throng that are starting to surround him the crowd understood that jesus was the messiah what they did not understand 
understand is that it wasn't time set up for the kingdom yet that although Jesus had tried to tell them so the crowd's actions along the roadside gave rise to the name of why we call it Palm Sunday a very large crowd had spread their cloaks on the road while others had cut the branches down from the trees and spread them on the road if we look at Matthew 21 and 8 but in scattering their cloaks on the road the people were giving Jesus what I would call the royal treatment they were treating him like a king and the palm branches symbolized a sign of peace ways and why I know that is according to John 12 and 13 it talked about the branches were cut down from palm trees but you look at what Jesus rode in on he rode in on a donkey or as the scripture declares an ass and the symbolic nature of a donkey is coming in peace if you're coming to do war you ride on a horse but he was coming in peace he was coming into a confused situation but he came bringing peace that somebody ought to shout right there that he came to bring peace but on the first Palm Sunday the people also honored Jesus verbally they did not just wave palm branches in front but the crowds went ahead of him that followed them shouting saying Hosanna the son of David blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna to the highest their praise of Jesus and the Jewish crowds were quoting what Psalms 118 25 and 26 says in other words Hosanna means save now I beseech thee O Lord O Lord I beseech thee send now prosperity blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord we have blessed you out of the house of the Lord which was an acknowledged prophecy of Christ can I just teach for a few more minutes the illusion of the Masonic Psalm drew resentment from the religious leaders that were present there in other words everybody was not there to honor him everybody was not there to give him praise everybody was not there to celebrate them and can I just put something right there everybody is not in your corner to celebrate you everybody that's saying that you're doing a good job is just waiting for you to fall I know that you I know that accolades is good but you've got to trust the spirit you got to look at and have some discernment if you're walking with Jesus Christ today because everybody that smiles in your face some of them are gonna stab you in your back I believe there was an R&B song called backstabbers they will smile in your face all the while they're stabbing you in the back I know we ain't been saved all our lives y'all know the song y'all know the song it's an oldie but goodie is what they call it sister Newman but it said save now save now I feel my help but he see what it says it says master rebuke thy disciples some of the Pharisees in the crowd said unto Jesus you got to rebuke the disciples in Luke 19 39 but however Jesus saw no need to rebuke them that spoke the truth he replied I tell tell you if these should hold their peace the stones would immediately cry out that's the reason why you can't fight your own battles the Bible says that the battle is not yours but it's the Lord's why is it that you are fighting your own battle why is it that you are opening up your mouth when God did not tell you to speak why is it that you have to find yourself in situations that you don't have to find yourself in can I help somebody you need to learn the ministry of silence you need to learn to be able to walk into a room be able to see a situation and be able to not open up your mouth be able to surveillance the situation and say God what is it that you want me to see in this situation not necessarily say in the situation because if you're too busy speaking you're not too busy seeing because God wants you to look at something he wants you to get a revelation of something in order to be able to be enriched in his word he needs you to understand that every battle that you fight is not something for you to speak about too often we allow the flesh to drive what we say and to drive what we do you don't have to worry about what people do and say to you all you got to do is speak what God tells you to speak and do what God tells you to do the problem is we have too many Christians speaking but God is not saying anything in their mouth I don't care if they got a suit and a tie on I don't care if their skirt is dragging the floor you got to look at them and you will know them by their fruit
moved. I don't want to see how you act Sunday at the 845 and 1115 service. I want to run into you at Walmart on Wednesday. I want to bump into you in the store and you don't know that I'm behind you. I want to know what kind of conversation you having. Are you can you be holy Monday through Saturday or can you only be holy on Sunday? Somebody bump out and say I shout Hosanna. But some 450 to 500 years ago, I got a little ways to go, y'all. But some 450 to 500 years prior to Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem, the prophet Zechariah had prophesied the event that we now call Palm Sunday. Because the Bible says in Zechariah 9 and 9, it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, the king cometh unto thee he is just and having salvation he is lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt and the foal of an ass the prophecy was fulfilled and it was an indeed a time of rejoicing so had Jerusalem had naturally welcomed their king but unfortunately the celebration was short lived it wasn't going to last a long time because the pride the crowds were looking for their messiah who would rescue them politically and free them naturally but see they didn't understand huh, that Jesus was not coming to save them politically huh, or naturally huh, but Jesus was coming to save them spiritually huh. you are looking for too many natural things huh. you gotta stop looking with the natural eye huh, and start looking with the spiritual eye huh. you gotta start looking at things huh, according to what God has you to look at them huh. just stop looking at it and saying huh, what am I going to do about this huh. I can't sign my way out of this situation huh. you speak death and damnation huh, before you even give glory to God huh? why is it that a storm rises up in your life huh, and you can't muster up a little joy huh? you can't think back to what God has done for you huh? but immediately as soon as a storm rise huh, you got to start giving glory to the situation huh? glory to the tribulation huh? yes it's the flesh huh? as apostle Nelson said this dirt body huh? this dirt body can't be saved huh? that's the reason why you've got to operate in the spiritual that's the reason why you've got to operate in the spiritual and let God do what he can do but even as the cultless multitudes had waved the palm branches and shouted for joy they missed the true reason of Jesus's presence there see they could not neither see nor understand the cross see Jesus was on his journey and I looked at the cross and you say what is the joy of the journey I'm glad you asked because I know y'all tired and I'm not going to be up here long but he had looked at the cross and he looked at it as his journey and I looked at it and I said Lord what is the journey? The journey is a trip. It's something that you do. You can go through different phases, different places. It's different terrains but God said no, 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 no I want you to look up spiritual journey and I went to the definition and it says it's a process of reconciliation and the education through enlightenment and that was enough for me to shout right there because it said it was a process of reconciliation what does Jesus come to do to reconcile us to him he came to save us from ourselves that's your problem it's not that we got a whole lot of people that don't like us because they don't have no power over us they don't have no heaven or hell to put you in but if you can ever get over yourself if you can ever get over the, the, the hurt that you put on yourself if you can ever forgive yourself then God can supernaturally catapult you to where you need to go it's as unique as the definition says as an individual as each individual is unique so the spiritual journey is in, is unique as an, in, as an individual as each individual is unique and each of us eventually comes to attain the reconciliation and education in our own way in our own time 
and in our own time just bless me that's the reason why I thank God for saving you because if I need somebody in my family saved I don't have to worry about if God is still saving I saw him just save you I saw him do it just for you so I don't have to be envious I don't have to be jealous of anything because God will come through and make a way out of no way in due time when is due time it is a time when God has set and appointed for me to come out of the hands of the enemy that's the reason why as Jesus had approached Jerusalem and saw the city he wept over it and he had said if you even had known on this day what would bring you peace but now it is hidden from your eyes the day will come upon you when your enemies will not even leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you see it's a tragic thing to see the Savior but not recognize him for who he is it's a tragic thing to see God right in front of you but not recognize him for who he is how is it that you are talking about that you can make it but every day he is giving you brand new mercies how can you talk about that you can't hardly go a day without smoking but God has been able to deliver you from another drug or another habit how is it that you say that you won't be loose from depression but God has given you a song that's in your heart that you can't get free of he wants you to open up your mouth and sing the song he wants you to open up your mouth and let it out and let the devil know that you thought that you had me but I got away somebody clap your hands and give God praise in here but here it is the crowds who were crying Hosanna on Palm Sunday were crying crucify him later that week I got to move on y'all but Hosanna is often thought as a declaration of praise it's similar to what I like to say is hallelujah but it's an actual plea for salvation so when we talk about hallelujah it's the highest praise but when we're talking about Hosanna it's a plea for salvation God save me God come to me God come to my rescue God save me from this situation somebody's got a Hosanna moment right now that you need God to deliver you from I dare you in this moment just open up your mouth and shout out Hosanna the Hebrew root word huh, is found in Psalms 118 and 25 huh, which says save now I beseech huh. the Hebrew word is yasha huh, which means to deliver or save huh, and ana means to beg or beseech huh. so if you combine the form of that word huh, in English it says Hosanna huh, and literally it means I beg you to save huh, or please deliver us huh. that's what you're saying huh, when you get down on your knees huh, and you say Lord come to my rescue you might not utter the words Hosanna but you're saying God I beseech you God I beg you God I need you to do something for me so as Jesus rode the donkey into Jerusalem the crowds were perfectly right to, sh right to shout out Hosanna they were acknowledging Jesus as the Messiah as shown when they had addressed him as the son of David but their cries was a recognition that Jesus was able to save but if we fast forward to today so that was in that day but if we fast forward to today we have this modern day in Christendom when we come into the house of God and we're more concerned with what we got on and the religious duties and supposed to cutting into the presence of God and saying God save me we're too busy wanting to get dressed up and looking at our ecclesiastical garments and doing things out of religious formality in other words just coming to just God I just want to be in your presence God I just want to be in your presence does anybody just want to be in the presence of God God I got to move here we've got away from the daily reflection of what God did for us and the ultimate sacrifice that he made that's the reason why we've got to do things and take time out for communion to commemorate the death the burial and the resurrection of him because if we don't keep it in the forefront of our mind we will forget what he did for us but I 
challenge you today in this moment to never forget what God has done for you. He picked you up. He made ways out of no ways. He turned things around in your life. You owe God a praise this morning. You owe him a praise on this fine Palm Sunday. You ain't got to wait till we get downtown. You can put a deposit on your Easter praise this morning and say, God, this week I'm going through with a praise because I've got expectation, God, that you're going to move. God, just like you rode in Jerusalem. God, I want you to ride through my situation. God, I want you to come through, God, and do just what you can do. But I don't know about you, but I thank God for making a decision to go through what he went through. Because if he didn't, I wouldn't be here. If he didn't, you wouldn't be here. Don't worry about what they said you were. Don't worry about what you did when you were 16. Don't worry about what you did when you was 18. They can't stop you now because the favor of God is on your life. And I got good news for somebody. Favor looks good on you. Favor looks good on you. It smells good. It looks good. I don't care what they say. They can't stop you because God is saying that I will never leave you nor forsake you. I feel like preaching now, but I got to move to my five points. And I know that you understand. So what it is that the joy of your journey is found out in three things that you've got to overcome and three things quickly. The first thing is unbelief. Somebody shout out unbelief. We simply fail to believe in God and the power that he has. We fail to recognize that you need him in order to believe. So here it is. You want joy on the journey? See, Jesus took his journey. We're all on a journey. You're all on a journey. Everybody in here is on a journey. You don't might not want to admit it, but yeah, the hell that you're going through right now, that was assigned to you for your journey. That is the pit stop that you are at. You might feel like that you're at uh, the end of your road uh, but God told me to tell you uh, you have not reached the destination uh, you're just at a rest stop uh, he wants you to understand uh, learn at this stop uh, what you're supposed to learn uh, to gird up your loins uh, and get some more power in you uh, to be able to fight the enemy another day uh, don't worry about uh, that you had to buckle uh, just don't fall all the way down uh, and if you do happen to fall uh, get yourself back up uh, because God said uh, that I'm right there with you uh, and I need you looking at me. Uh, so unbelief. Uh, the word of God was not made. Uh, the word of God uh, is not made to be alive only in our lives. Uh, we, have, we have to understand uh, that we've got to make the scripture come alive also. Uh, so we can't just read the word of God uh, and not apply it to our lives. Uh, that's the reason why we don't do anything uh, without giving some word. Uh, we don't think enough of ourselves uh, that God can do uh, anything with us. We believe that our past circumstances have defined us. No, people have defined you, but God has forgiven you. Stop worrying about what people defined you and start thanking God for his forgiveness. Don't worry about how they defined you, how they labeled you. And you say, yeah, 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 that was me, but my God has forgiven me. I don't care who you say I am, but I'm not that person anymore. I'm not who she is. I'm not who he is. I am of the redeemed. The Lord saved me. The Lord raised me. He filled me with the gift of the Holy Ghost. He raised me up. And you think that everything that God did for me, that I'm going to let something that you say define my praise level. The devil is a liar. Just because you tried to bring it to my memory, I'm going to give him a better praise now. I'm going to give him a supernatural praise. Because when I think of the good of Jesus and all that he has done for me my soul cries out hallelujah I thank God for saving me can I preach five more minutes y'all so here we go to the next thing and it talks about brokenness but if you're unbelief then you have brokenness in your body you think that because that God has reduced you to the fragments that you can't be made whole but God says I got to break you all the way down huh, to build you back up. Huh. Somebody shout glory. Huh. Somebody shout glory. 
Romans says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and is acceptable and a perfect will of God. That's the reason why you got to have your mind made up. If you're going to be on this journey, you got to have a made up mind, Sister Barnes. I made my mind up a long time ago that I'm going with Jesus all the way. No matter what the devil says, no matter what they say, no matter what the pops say, I'm going on with Jesus all the way. I can remember when the devil counted me out, but God said, you're not going to die like this, but he raised me up to preach the gospel. He didn't just raise me up to get married. He didn't just raise me up to have children, but he raised me up to preach the gospel. And I gotta preach. I gotta do it God's way. I gotta do it like God gave it. So he talks about brokenness. That's where the authentic worshiper comes when a relationship with God when you can be broken but still lift your hands. Can you be broken but still give God praise? Can you be broken but still sing on the choir? Can you be broken but still assemble into the house of God? You got to be broken for God to raise you up he takes the broken and makes them new you want God to break you because you didn't like the old you anyway you want God to make you over at least that's what you asked him for so why are you complaining when he breaks you he breaks you to build you he breaks you to raise you he breaks you to give you a blessing somebody shout glory third point you have doubt in your mind you look at doubt and doubt stops allowing doubt to get closer to God I can recall the many miracles that Jesus was performing in the Bible but people were entering into the room it was doubt in their mind but God said he had to get them out of the way because if you're going to believe God in this season you can't afford to doubt you can't afford to doubt you got to cry out Hosanna and let him come rescue you you got to cry out Hosanna and let him come and save you thank you Holy Ghost he saved you before that's why I thank God for a good memory you ought to thank God for the reminder the car accident was a reminder the bankruptcy was a reminder the repossession was a reminder yeah it was a part of your journey but look at you where you are you thought it was a day in but God said it was just a rest stop you thought you really needed that Sentra but now you're driving a Mercedes you thought that you couldn't get out of that apartment but now you got a single family house you thought that you would never make above minimum wage and now you're making 50 to 60 grand you better give God some praise up in this house unbelief brokenness doubt two points and I'm on my way so those are the things that you struggle with on the journey but here's where the joy comes in because the joy of the Lord is what the joy of the Lord is your what so see you've got to understand that once you've overcome the unbelief the brokenness and the doubt then you're ready to move forward to allow God to use you in the season. Once you have overcome it, not that it still has a hold over you, not to say that you would forget about it, but no longer does it have a hold over you. See, that's why you need to stop thank asking God to make you forget about it, but you ought to thank God that he brings it to your memory every once in a while, because that's why his grace is sufficient for you. You thought that you couldn't do it, but God said, yes, you can do it. So the storm that's rising up in your life right now, and you've got the audacity to say, God, this is too big for me then all of a sudden God starts 
playing the movie right in front of you. He said, you thought that was too big? Well, what about this? And then the slideshow starts to play. And what about this? And the slideshow continues to play. And what about this? And God said, don't you dare tell me that you can't make it. I'm a God that will do just what I said I was going to do. If I spoke it, that settles it. If I said I was going to do it, I'm going to do it. So then the fourth point is where the joy comes in is where you have the acceptance. So when I get the acceptance, I'm coming into covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. No longer am I talking about what the devil did for me. Now I'm talking about the joy of the Lord is my strength. I got the nerve to say even on a bad day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. See, many are waiting for God to do for them. And God has already told you that I've already dispatched it into your residence. So all I need you to do is start giving me praise for it. Start giving me glory for it. Start doing it because I said that I've come to your rescue. I've come to save you. I've come to deliver you. Ask all you got to do is shout out Hosanna. Shout out Hosanna. Shout out Hosanna. Stop being afraid to call the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is a strong tower and the righteous run into and they are saved. If you need to be saved today, I dare you to call Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. There's power in his name. You you need power I dare you to call on them you need deliverance I dare you to call on them you need strength in your body I dare you to call on them that's what they were doing they were saying save now save now but what they were asking to be saved from that's not what they needed you need a spiritual makeover you need a spiritual deliverance so as we enter into this holy week I'm going through with the praise because I'm expecting God to do the unexpected I'm expecting God to do the supernatural I'm expecting God to save families I'm expecting God to raise loved ones I'm expecting God to reconcile relationships you thought that it was over but God said shout out Hosanna shout out glory shout out glory hallelujah then there's triumph there's triumph somebody shall triumph so I've got to struggle but when I accept God and I get into a relationship with him I'm in a triumphant state you see triumphant state can I help somebody we think that the triumphant state is when you've gotten to the point where everything is over meaning all of the bad stuff is over and you've made it to your appointed time but not necessarily the case it is when you've gotten to the point where you say no matter what I got to go through I'm going to give him praise I believe I got about 10 people that know what I'm talking about I'm done y'all I'm done we got to go home but the triumphant state huh, is when you can say though they slay me like Job huh, yet will I trust him huh? I don't know who I came to preach to today huh, but I'm looking for some triumphant people huh, that I came through unbelief huh, I came through brokenness huh, I even came through a little doubt huh, I accepted the plan of God for my life huh, and I got a little rocky huh, but I stayed in there huh, I stayed with God huh, and God matured me huh, God cultivated me huh, God developed me huh, and I've gotten to the point huh, that I can shout huh, even in my trial huh, I can shout huh, even in my despair huh, I might not have the money huh, but I got Jesus huh, I might not have the job huh, but I got Jesus huh, I might not have the relationship huh, but I got Jesus huh, and Jesus
does is just enough. He is enough for your situation. It's the joy of the journey. You got to grab some joy. Leap for some joy. Grab hold of some joy. Grab hold of some joy. Pull it down. Pull it down. Pull it down. Pull it down. He wants to give it to you. He wants to deliver you. Pull it down. Pull it down. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any triumphant people in the house? Any triumphant people in the house that you said that the joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world, show no can't take it away. The world didn't give me this house, and the world can't take it away. The world didn't give me this Holy Ghost, and the world can't take it away. So stop putting your Holy Ghost up on the shelf. You better use it. Use the name at the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Satan's got to back up at the name of Jesus. He's got to deliver you out of the hands of the enemy. Any Jesus name in here. Any Bible believers. Any Jesus folk in here. Somebody shout out Jesus. My soul shouts Hosanna. Get your perspective in the right place. We're all dealing with something. Don't you dare allow what it is that you're going through to keep you from seeking the face of God because just when you can't make it that's when you really need him the devil is trying to cloud your mind to try to get you to think that you can't make it that's the reason why as soon as when you get depressed and you start feeling sad, what's the first thing we do? We drop our head. But my Bible says that I will lift my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. For my help cometh from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. Now, yes, God is omnipresent and he's everywhere, but he told me to lift my head. He didn't tell me to bow it. I bow in submission to him, not to my problem. your neighbor say neighbor who are you submitting to they ain't even in my notes who are you submitting to but when you submit to the hand of God then what you say is God get the noise out God get the noise out bishop and this is my brother and I've known him all my life that's because he's older but I've known him all my life and I have not and he's known me all mine but I at an early age because we, we have different ways about us I could not I'm not going to go there I could not understand why he moved at the pace and at the rate that he moved. But I could not understand it. But the more I walk with Jesus, I understand the benefit of a slow walk. I, under, I understand the benefit of slowly walking to make sure, God, I got everything that you want me to get before I walk into this room. God, give me all of the downloads so I can process it and get that revelation. So when I go in here, God, I'm going to do only what you told me to do. God, give me so much of you that there's nothing in me left. 
See, the quick prayer that you pray before you go in to do battle and you know you're ready to do battle and you want to do battle, that's not the prayer that I'm talking about. Lord, I got to go get this person straight. Lord, give me strength. No, you don't want God to give you strength to get a person straight. But that's what we pray. But that's what we pray. And the reason why it's funny but it's so important is because you feel validated and vindicated in that moment but it starts to mess with your mind afterwards and it starts to affect your heart life is in the blood where is your heart where, 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 where does it regulate it regulates from your heart you can't survive without your heart so you've got to be very careful to allow anything to affect your heart. So as I'm going along this journey, Brother Frank, I, I, I kind of drive, you know, I, I, I kind of set the, the, the speed limit. I kind of go with the flow of traffic. And if there is no traffic, I set the flow. Thank you, Jesus. Open confession is good for the soul. Then my wife got the nerve to do like this. And you know, I, 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 you're not driving. Go on back on, on on that side. Go on back on on that side. Ain't nothing you can do over here. Nothing you can do over here. There's no brake on your side. There's no brake. There's no steering wheel. Go on back to sleep. How is it that they wake up right at the time when you're speeding? <laughs> I, I know it's my help. I know. I know. I slow down just a little bit. I do. I slow down. I wait for her to go back to sleep and then I cruise back up. But along the journey, my last point I'm done, is I thank God because I'm learning to see God in everything. I know we say, I know we say, you know, you know, so deeply spiritual. You know, I want to see God in everything. I want to see God in the trees. I, I want to see God in the rocks. I just want to see God in everything. You know, I just want to see God just, he just moving, 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 right? No, we are not, we, we, we are not that deep where we seeing it like that 24-7. But when you get into the presence of God and he starts to talk to you, you don't want to leave it. So when you're driving and you're just on the highway, Kristen, sometimes I wake up, she say, you all right? I'm fine. I might look, my face might look perplexed, but I'm just in deep thought. I'm just, I'm looking at the trees, but I see something else. I'm looking at the road because I'm looking and I see my journey. And I'm here to tell somebody, I don't care what your journey look like right now. It could be dim and you can have one headlight out and you ain't got no fog lights and it's thick fog. I'm here to tell you that light is coming and it is going to be there because midnight is there, but daybreak is coming in a just a few hours. If you can just hold on, slow down, drive the speed limit, stay in your own lane. Don't try to tell nobody how to do what they supposed to do, but you run your race. You do what God told you to do. God is going to deliver you. And when he delivers you, you owe him a praise. You owe him a praise. You owe him a praise. Has anybody ever been delivered from the hand of the enemy? You ought to get on your feet and give God some praise in this house. Give God some praise in this house. Open up your mouth and give God glory. Open up your mouth and shout Hosanna. Shout Hosanna. Yeah, the joy is coming back. Strength is coming back. Deliverance is coming back. Restoration is coming back. You got to grab on to it. And when you get them, don't let them go. Don't let them go. There might be somebody here that doesn't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins. You say, I need some help. Just come to the altar. Just come to the altar. You need some help today, come to the altar. You don't have to tell us what it is, but if you need some help, come to the altar. I mean help. 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 Somebody shout out help. You need help. You need help. We 
we all have a journey. But when Jesus was riding in there, they were saying, Hosanna. And in a few days, they were saying, crucify him. That's the reason why you can't be moved by what the crowd does. You can't be moved and believe your own height. That's our problem. Some of us believe our own height. You look at your bank account and you got enough zeros behind it and you think that everything is good. Let somebody hack into your account. Why are you sleeping? Wake up the next day. Nothing. Yeah, the bank's supposed to give it to you, but will you be saying Hosanna then? Will you be saying, Lord, I praise you, Lord, I thank you? You be getting on a toll-free number, going driving to somebody's bank, calling them from work because you're trying to find where all your zeros are. Stop believing things that you've gotten and believing that you've got it through your own might. God has given us everything that we have. Every single thing. Every penny that you have. Every morsel of food that you have eaten. Every piece of gas that you put into your car. Every job that you have been blessed to be able to have. Whether you really like the job or not, God has given it to you and it has supplied all of your needs. I just want to be grateful. I just want to be grateful. The Bible says that heaven and the earth shall pass away, but my word shall abide forever. It's going to stand. And when you don't have anybody to count on, you can count on the word. When you don't have anybody that you can depend on, you can depend on the word of God. Because the word of God, David said, the word of I hid in my heart, in my heart, in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. We're getting ready to pray. If you're not up here, I need you praying. There might be somebody there who has not been baptized. In Jesus' name. All things are ready. You can be baptized today. If there's somebody who wants to be baptized today, you can be baptized in water today. For the remission of your sins. And according to Acts 2.38, he has promised to fulfill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's a promise. It's a gift. You don't have to pay anything for it. It's a gift. It's a gift. All you got to do is open up your hand and say, God, I want the gift. You might be there and you don't have a church home. And you're looking for a church home. We would be happy to take you in. If you're there, you need a covering. You need a covering. You need a covering. If you're there, we're praying. Strong! 
to pray with me we're going to have oil down for every family for next week and I want everybody to pray with me over this oil as we stand we ask our preachers come on stand with me How many know that the devil desires to destroy families? He really wants to destroy families. I can't get it out of my spirit. And we just can't be satisfied being saved or being the only one saved in our families. Let me tell you what that produces. That produces a spirit of self-righteousness. Jesus says unto Peter, on, unto, unto Peter, Satan desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I pray for you. You didn't make it on your own. I pray for you. You would have given up, but I pray for you that your faith fail not. But this is what you owe me for praying for you. When you get to a triumphant mindset, because that's what it means by being converted. When you get to that mindset that you're not going to let nothing stop you no more, and you know that I'm in it to win it, I want you to go back and strengthen your brother. Now you can't go, at, go back if you ain't converted. You can't go back if you ain't healed. You can't go back if you ain't fully delivered. You know what I'm talking about. Because you may go back and get caught. But we are praying that all of this word you've been receiving you got scars of your past. You got situations, but now you're operating with a triumphant mindset. So now our responsibility is to go back and get them. I told y'all some time ago, I thought this vision was for somewhere else because he hadn't completely given me, but I saw people who families were dropping off that were terminally ill I saw them terminally ill and I saw the doctors had given them uh, death notices in other words the family was dropping them off to us because they could not do anything and we were their last resort 
And as I began to minister the word, those people received the baptism in Jesus' name. And as they were baptized, they were coming up healed. I literally saw this. This is when the AIDS epidemic was so strong and, and folks didn't know what to do. And I literally saw people being baptized one way, coming up another way. And what grew the church was the miracles that God had done in the family member's life. Families knew who they used to be, but they couldn't believe who they had become. I thought it was physical, but the Lord waited to tell me, no, it was spiritual. Some of your families thought you would never be healed, that you would never be repaired, and now they look at you and there's a conversation going on saying, what's happened to such and such? They don't flip out no more. I, I thought they were really certified. And y'all know what I mean by certified. Because some of y'all have tricked people into believing that you were certified so they would leave you alone. You knew you wasn't certified. But you carried that label to try to just keep people off of you. But now you are spirit under control. You are spirit that responds totally different and is causing people to want to know what's happened to you. And I do believe that God has given us a venue. I just believe it in my spirit. Because we're going out on a faith limb. We, we stepping out. I had to listen. I, literally, I'm telling you that if you have not listened to this video, listen to it Apostle Nelson when he was here on the Sunday morning he talked about doing things that is beyond your reach he said you don't have a problem if it's not a God problem he said some of the problems that you're asking God to do that's not a problem he said in that video he said why did Jesus wait for four years I mean, four days to come to heal Lazarus. He said, because day one, it wasn't a God problem. It wasn't a God problem until it gotten out of control. And can I tell you that God is trying to show himself to you in a greater way? Because you're saying, now I have a God problem. But that's just a type, that's just a time and an opportunity for God to get the glory. So as we pray, I want everybody to extend your hands this way. And I want you to think about your family. I'm thinking about Miss Liz's daughter right now. Woo, Jesus, hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. Your family is my family. Come on, come on. Put it in the atmosphere. Say, your family is my family. We can't let you carry these burdens alone. We can't let you carry these burdens alone. He didn't let us, he didn't, he, 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 he carried my burdens. So we have to learn to praise God and celebrate with one another come on y'all put your hands here yeah, come on you're extending your hand because you are extended prayer come on stretch as a point of faith contact because we pray because we believe in order for this oil to get to this magnitude, all kinds of olives had to be crushed in order to get this much oil. Trees of olives had to be crushed. Hallelujah. To get this much oil. But we believe the crushing of these trees, of these olive trees, 
the crushing God of all of these olives will not be in vain because it'll be a sign or hallelujah of the anointing it will be a sign God that you're moving God just as you were crushed and you release the glory of God hallelujah this oil will serve as a sign and everybody God's head that is anointed with this oil God who God will see the effects will see the signs will see the wonders you don't have no respect of person as we give it God we give it in faith as we give it God we give it in faith as we give it God we give it in faith as we give it God we anoint them in faith God for restoration of the family restoration of broken relationships restoration of broken children restoration of mistakes that we've made that folk won't let us hallelujah overcome things God that folks won't forgive us of God we hallelujah stand here God believing that you're gonna send full recovery total recovery total recovery total recovery oh what the devil meant for bad God you're gonna turn it around for good what the devil meant to destroy God you're gonna use to build hallelujah for the stone that the builders have rejected has become the chief cornerstone my 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 God we stand we stand believing that you're gonna do it we're not wondering we believe in you're gonna do it we gonna believe God you're gonna do it it's already done it's already done it's already done hallelujah favor is upon my life God, hallelujah favor is upon your life hallelujah favor is all on you favor of God is all on you and if you ask anything in my name I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it that was the scripture today I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it that prayer that you just asked that prayer you just asked in faith God said he gonna do it he gonna do it he's already working he's already working just get out of the way get out of the way and let God do it God we do it because your word said do it you said if any sick among you let them call for the elders of the church and let them anoint them with oil so God all we have is your word all we're standing on is your word and we believe total restoration because we stand on your word in Jesus name amen and amen come on put praise in the house come on come on I want you to just repeat this after me. Say, I might be flawed, but I'm favored. Come on, put that in the atmosphere. Say, I might be flawed. Because none of us are perfect. Ain't no, look at somebody say, ain't nobody perfect. So I might be flawed. Matter of fact, he created you with an imperfection so you would. <laughs> he built in an imperfection so you would have to lean. Good Lord have mercy. You say, Pastor, where you find that at? 
Uh, Paul said, I, I, I had a thorn in my flesh. And I asked you, Lord, to remove this thorn. But he said, no, I ain't going to move it. My grace is sufficient. So, so look at your neighbor and say, if you're looking for perfection, you ain't going to find it. Come on, lift those hands and shout, I'm flawed, but I'm faithful. Even with my flaws, he came to see about me. See, 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 see. I waited all this time because I thought when you got the Holy Ghost, all your imperfections were taken away. But then I found out in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. And he didn't come to save your flesh. He came to, he came to give you power over your flesh. So he came to give you favor when the imperfection would try to control you. That's why I said if you walk in the, in the spirit, you will not fulfill. Look at your neighbor and say, that imperfection may be trying to hold you down, but you got power over that imperfection. You got the favor of God, and it's called grace. Tell somebody, say grace. Keep on moving. Woo, I just, my God. Look, look at your neighbor and say, it's a fresh start. Come, tell somebody, say, in order for our family to get a fresh start, God said, I'm going to give you a fresh start before I give your family a fresh start. So, so when y'all start talking and they get saved, you won't be walking around with no grudge on you. You won't be walking around talking about what used to happen. He said, so bury it now, so next week you don't have to deal with it. Woo! Lord, have mercy. Look at somebody say, he give me a fresh start. Now I'm on my road. I found 